right guys we are on to regular multiplication now we are going to discuss in this one um, multiplying by a one digit number multiplying by a two digit number and then multiplying by greater numbers all in this lesson so really this lesson is going to go through topic 3.6 3.7 and 3.8 so let's get started Okay, let's pose this first problem. This first problem is a cafeteria orders three cases of milk. Now, in each one of those cases, it contains 28 containers of milk. So we have the problem 28 times three. Now we know that basic multiplication is repeated addition. So we could do 28 plus 28 plus 28, and that's fine for this particular problem. But when we start doing 28 times six, we don't wanna do 28 plus 28 plus 28 plus 28 plus 28 plus 28. That would just be too much work. So let's take you through the problem. First, we always wanna set the one with the greatest amount of digits on the top. There's a reason for that, because when you put that on the bottom, you then have to drop zeros, and it becomes a little bit more confusing. We will get to that point, but always put the, the number with the greatest amount of digits on top. So in this case, 28 has two digits, where three is only one digit, so we're gonna put the 28 on top. So we have 28 times three. It's very important that we line up our place values. The eight and the three are in the ones place, so they should be uh, underneath each other, on top of each other, and the two should be off to the left. So the first thing we do is we take the eight times three. 8 times 3 will give us 24, but we can't put two digits in one place. So we put down that 4 and carry over that 2 above the 2. And then we have to do 2 times 3. 2 times 3 is 6. But you see the little 2 above the 2? We have to add that 2. So 6 plus 2 is 8. And when we put that all together, we get the answer of 84. So to answer our problem, if the cafeteria bought three cases, of milk that each contain 28 containers of milk, they would have 84 containers of milk. A carpenter sells 38 chairs for $23 a piece. And we want to figure out what his total amount of sale is. Uh, to do this, we're going to introduce a new vocabulary word that's called partial products. When we use partial products, we will add the partial products together to get the total product. All right? Tomorrow, or when we do this lesson in class, I will show you a, a graphic that will help you better understand what a partial product is. Well, let's look at this problem again. Again, you must line up the 38 and the 23. This one, they have the same amount of digits, so it doesn't really matter because of the commutative property. It doesn't matter what way you organize this in. But I'm gonna put the larger on the top, and that's 38. I'm gonna multiply that by the 23. So first, we must start with the three times eight again. And three times eight, we know is 24. So we put down that four and carry the two above the three. And then we can do three times three. Three times three will give us nine, but we must add that two. So our first partial product, is 114. We must then cross off the three on the bottom because we're done with that. When we cross off the three, we must drop a zero. Why? Because we are not multiplying by two, we are now multiplying by 20. And we know when we have, we're multiplying by a digit with a zero in the end, we just add the zero to the, the product at the end. We do the same thing here. So we drop that zero to kind of keep everything in line as a placeholder. And then we do the problem. So two times eight is 16. We put down that six and we carry the one. All right, and then we do two times three, which is six, and we have to add that one. So our other partial product is 760. Now we must take our two partial products, 114 and 760, and find the sum of those partial products to make give us our total product. And when we do that, four plus zero is four, one plus six is seven, and one plus seven is eight. So our total product of 38 times 23 is 874.
Okay, for the third and final example here, I'm going to show you a greater number, which means there's going to be more than two digits and two digits. We're actually gonna take a three digit times a two digit. Now this will actually work for any uh, large number. You could do a four digit times a four digit. Just make sure that you're holding the place. So a charity collects 163 cans every day for 14 days. We wanna find out how many cans they have after the two week time. So we have to set it up. Again, we use the larger number on top. So 163 goes on top, 14 will then go on the bottom. Make sure you're lining up your place values. The three and the four should be in line and the one and the six should be in line. So we start off with the four. We must multiply the four on the bottom by the ones, tens, and hundreds place on the top. So four times three is 12. We'll put down the two and we'll carry that one over to do six times four is 24. You see that number coming up a lot this uh, lesson. We must add the 1 then to make that 25. We carry over that 2. Then we do 1 times 4. 1 times 4 will give us 4 and we add the 2 so that gives us 6. So our first partial product is 652. We then cross off the 4 and go over to our tens place which is a 1. When you're multiplying by the 1 you know that you have the identity property. So 1 times 163 is just gonna give us 163, so we can actually write that down. All right, then we go to the adding the partial products, finding the sum. Two plus zero is two, five plus three is eight, six plus six is 12, we must carry over that one, and then we have one and two is two. So our total product here is 2,282. So the charity raised 2,282 cans in that two week period. Why don't you try one on your own?